Hey guys, welcome to the session on civics. I actually, uh, and Star Trek, um, someone asked in Hoover how many Star Trek uh, puns there were going to be, and I counted, and I think there's going to be about this many. Um, so, so yeah, uh, I was supposed to do that deadpan. We said I should do a deadpan, I laughed anyway. She doesn't do deadpan. Not really well. It's great trying to get her to do deadpan, so. I'll do my best. Well, well, well maybe, we'll practice a couple more times later. Anyway, we're doing uh, our talk here, Prime Directive. Civics for Techs, it started um, when I was working for the DA's office last year, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but glad you guys are here. This is gonna be interactive, so we'll have some polls and stuff later on um, through the talk, so I just want you guys to be aware that we're gonna ask you to interact with us. Uh, obviously, I could talk to a brick wall, but I uh, would love to hear what you guys are doing in your communities and what ideas you have and how maybe we can do and figure out these things together. Um, Uva. Download it, use it, participate, love it, or that. Um, anyway, uh, this right here is, as I said, John, also known as Sauce. You want to introduce yourself to the party? Uh, yeah, I, uh, as you can see, my list kind of keeps on going down there. Uh, I've been around. I've done a ton of different things. I was raised on tech uh, and ended up with a journalism degree of all things coming out of college, but wound up back on in here. And what's funny is, like, I love where I live, I love the, the people, the things we do, so I went and decided to sign up to be a cultural commissioner, which basically means I'm the, uh, the fun patrol for the city. We're the ones that do like uh, your street dances, all that kind of stuff, which is great, because our city has really divided politics right now. You know, e, the, this side hates that side. Everybody likes me. <laughs> I also do a whole bunch of other crazy stuff, as you can see on there. I have actually done everything on that one. Yes, everything on that list, uh, and a lot more. Uh, so, yeah, if you have something that you like to talk about, want to talk about it afterwards, uh, once again, ex-journalist, so I'll get it out of you, whether you like it or not. <laughs> this happens to be El Copeland. Yeah, so, um, and I, I don't know if you caught this, but he's from Santa Clara, California. West Coast. Um, West Coast, and I'm El Copeland. I've been around the MSP space for a little bit. I know quite a few of you from last year, mostly from D&D. &D. Um, but I am a partner with Mendy at Rising Tide. Um, we help fix problems. I think it's mostly what we do. Um, but I live on the other side of the country. I live in Macon, Georgia. I like to tell people it's 50 years south of Atlanta. Um, if you get the joke, then I know that we can talk a little bit more. And if you don't, then I know I should be a little bit more careful about what I say. Um, I have a lot of really diverse experience before I came into the MSP world. Um, my degree is actually in environmental engineering um, and water, that's like water quality and stuff. That doesn't really go with computers. Uh, I learned that pretty quickly. But um, so I, I studied that and I studied a lot of uh, civic engagement type stuff. The thing about water quality and public health is that it's about education. It's about taking the things that are complicated and dumbing it down and making it simple so that anyone can handle it. And that's a lot of my approach to technology. So. This talk came about because last year I was working for my local district attorney's office. I'd left the MSP space briefly. I found this really, someone came to me with a really interesting job and they said, hey, work for the local district attorney. She's doing some amazing stuff in the community. We'd love for you to be involved because we need to get the word out there, get more people involved. And um, so I was really excited. I took that job May of last year and um, I submitted this talk in October of last year. I was like really excited. I want to talk about civics with my people. I want people to be able to uh, feel like they matter. And then I realized in January I needed to quit my job and uh, I realized I still had this talk to give. And uh, I, I realized that that's what we need to talk about. Um, I wanted to give this talk because I love Star Trek and I was on a, a podcast with um, Ninja One uh, a couple years ago and we are talking about open source software. And I love the fact that we can stand on the shoulders of giants using open source software, um, that, that I feel that that's the path for us to get to a future where we can have, you know, starships and all of oh, that. Oh, to have just the, the world that we want, replicators, you know, being able to transport between the sides of the country without a six-hour plane flight. I just, I just want to build a starship, yeah. and uh, you know, like I just, I, I feel like that's possible. I feel like we could, if we could just put all of our differences aside, we could figure it out. But I'm so disillusioned with the fact that working in local government, you have people who think that the internet is made of tubes, and they don't understand like the stuff that's going on. 
all of the government, um, you know, and so it's like, how do we, how, how do we reconcile the, the depth of desire that we have, the experience and skills that we have as technical people, how do we live in a world that is so advanced technically? I mean, everyone has a supercomputer in their pocket. Uh, how do we reconcile that with, with, with the fact that no one knows how it works? And it's a constant struggle for us, right? We constantly talk about how our end users are uh, really not that brilliant. And we, we talk about how there's all these policies that are coming down the pipeline. Where does that put us? How many of you cut the TikTok ones with Congress and just were pure cringe because they had no idea and they like to call it, what was it, the TikToks? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, ticky tacky. Uh, that's fine. Um, so, so in this, I had already, John and I have been friends for a while, and I, I had already pinged him because I, some of the stuff that he's been working on, other than the Cultural Commission, is really interesting, um, and I'd love to, to present that to you guys. And so I was like, oh, John, come do this talk with me. And um, I, I messaged him back in January, and I was like, John, I don't fucking want to do this talk. I don't, I don't want to do this talk. I just want to build a starship. And he said this really annoyingly good thing. It does. It, anyone can build a starship. We have the technology to go to space. There's so much out there that we can do. But we got to get together to build a federation. And if, eh, you know, all y'all start, uh, you Trekkies out there know that you got your Romulans, your Klingons, all those different groups with their different groups, uh, their side, forms of government and such. Ooh, yeah, Cardassians, it's always fun with them. But for a federation, yeah, that, that's, that's some good old democracy, right? You know, getting everybody together to go and actually try to agree on something. I mean, yeah, I know Enterprise isn't the most popular one, but it is funny trying to watch them to get together and get stuff done. They do their best. It really is. <laughs> and that gets into the concept of civic engagement, that we do have to get together and actually talk with one another, that we need to participate in these activities to improve one's community. And that's huge because, and it, it's tough, because out there, we're still the minority. You walk into these rooms and you see people, you see the gray hairs that are there, that are telling you you don't know what you're talking about. Well, I'd love to see them describe what HTML is. At the same time, it's not hard for us to go out and learn, to grow together, to become, to create communities. I mean, look at us. We're the same group that figured out, oh, we're all nerds and people hate us. Let's go create a group to go play games with across the country or across the world. Let's go and create conventions where we're able to meet on and up and talk about the cool stuff we do. Let's get together in a place like this and do that and get together and do that. So why can't we, especially now in today's day and age where, I mean, how many people watch Vox Machina and watch people play Dungeons and Dragons? Like how many people watch The Witcher and go, oh, it's not just Henry Cavill being hot. It's a great fantasy world. I mean, how many Oscars did Lord of the Rings or you know, it's mainstream, being a nerd and understanding that, and all the loves and passions that we have. So being able to bring that, being able to take that and realize that there's more people like that in your community, and you can engage with these people, is huge. I mean, to the point, just to be a little bit clearer, I think a lot of us, um, we thrive on the ideal that we are isolated. Um, we're kind of these lone wolves, we're weird. Um, you know, from an early age, we've experienced a lot of rejection. Um, uh, uh, you know, maybe because you're too quiet, or maybe because you're too loud, maybe because of how you interact in the world. And so it's really easy to separate yourself out. Um, and so, so to be able to find a community of people is really super important for us to realize that it doesn't matter if we once identify as alone, we're actually alone together. Yeah. So. But that comes to kind of the next point, that if you're not part of it, though, you're just along for the ride. You know, you, there's a lot of politics that we talk about today where we like to complain about it. But unless you're participating in, congrats, you get to go where the ship is still, uh, steered. And that's painful, you know. We have voices. We do speak up. Believe me, we all have opinions. Once again, Star Trek Gate Wars, which was the best again? Uh, yeah, it's... Yeah, um, and so, so we got to this point. So we're, we're talking civic engagement and, we're, and talking about wanting, I mean, I'm going to be quitting my job. What does that look like? And what does that look like for this talk? 
I'm jaded. Uh, it was disappointing. Like, actually, right now, as we speak, my county has been offline, the entire county, the IT took the entire IT department offline for a week. I actually checked in with one of my previous friends who's an attorney uh, for the DA's office, and she's like, yeah, uh, we don't have computers or internet or email right now, um, so I don't really know how we're gonna try any burners this week. Um, what was and that 50 years south of <laughs> 50 years south of Atlanta, and believe it or not, it's not much better. If you talk to any other lawyers anywhere else in the world, they are, they are some, very, very backwards when it comes to technology people. I'm married to one. I mean, I mean, I had one lady that I would, she, she would have me, before I could proof any, or send anything out, she would have me email it to her. She would take it out of the Word document, edit it in her own Word document after downloading it, and then copy and paste the text into an email back to me. So I couldn't have the changes. It was, it was really, it really broke my heart. And she's, you know, 75, 80 years old. She should be retired. Um, she's not gonna learn any new technology. But, so I'm going back to the point about telling the story and doing this session. I am jaded. I am tired. I spent more hours than is right trying to help fix an office that was drowning already. Um, trying to fix, trying to talk to their IT department about things that they probably should do. Uh, you know, there's a copper line running to this building for redundancy and no one knew where it terminated. Like, it's just... <laughs> It's just like you have you have so many good ideas, but you can't follow them through to completion. And so it's like I don't want to do this talk. Maybe maybe this was the wrong talk to submit. Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe you know. And so uh, as John and I were talking, like trying, I'm trying to put on a brave face. I'm trying to pull this together. And um, we ended up talking about Doctor Who, which is another one of my favorite things. And um, there's we said something about even. When things are hard, it's important to do the right thing. And it made me think about an episode. Any Doctor Who fans in here? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but, so, there's, yeah. so there's an episode called The Beast Below, which is oddly enough about democracy. And there's a character, uh, I don't want to give you any spoilers because I want you to watch it. But essentially, there's a character who has been hurt for so long and gone through so much pain, and yet they choose over and over again to help those around them. And there's a beautiful quote, and here's a little bit of art from it. So uh, it's amazing to think about all the pain and misery and loneliness that we experience, all of the things that are so hard for us that we have to deal with on a regular basis, the jaded feelings, the frustration of dealing with people over and over again who don't know what technology is and who are actively putting our rights on the line because they don't know how to run an IT department um, or create policy that is meaningful. And we need to have our voice in that. And so to take all of that and continue to hope is the first point of what I want to talk about today. It's our job. Hope is not lost. We don't, it's not something that is expendable. It's not a limited resource. You don't have to give up. Uh, you're not a red shirt. Um, which for the non-Star Trek people, the running gag is that the red shirts immediately die and they don't come back to the ship. Um, but actually they've been rewriting that in recent times. Red shirts aren't dying, so that's a huge win for the red shirts. Um, but hope, hope is not lost. There are big things that are happening. People are continuing to do good things in the world that matter. It doesn't have to be, not everything has to be perfect, not everything has to be the world that we envision it needs to be right now but people are doing some amazing things. So um, I want to just uh, go ahead and ask you guys, like, what have you seen in the world that inspires you? We'll give you a couple examples of the stuff that we've seen, but um, if you want to go ahead and grab out your phones and... Little interaction time here, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Who here uh, loves QR codes, <laughs> right? <laughs> right, talking about security. That was the other thing, the DA's office loved QR codes. I was like, oh, no. that doesn't make any sense. This is an email, just make a link. No, it needs a QR code. Like, oh, that, that means it could be an email. So, okay. Um, yes, please jump on here. Uh, we're going to, it's simple, just drop in words, talk about things, that kind of thing. So, easy done. So, a few things that I want to, oh, did everyone get that? Or? No, can you go back? Oh, back. There you go. Too quick. Sorry. Not While she has that up on. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to be slow. <laughs> You know, it's, there, there is really cool things that people are doing that are out there that you just, you, people are not stopping, and we should stop. And we should all get inspired by this kind of stuff because if there's stuff you want to do, do it. Yeah. 
do it! <laughs> if I remember that meme. Um, but it's, it's really cool being able to reach out and just kind of see what other people are doing. So here's a few examples in our, in our community, in the MSP space, that I've seen in recent months, weeks and months, and then an example from my own community. Um, first one is IT Partners classes in MSP, I think out of the Northeast. Is anyone familiar with them? Uh, sometimes they've got your peer group people. Um, I followed them for a while. They were, they were partners of ours at Tier 2 Technologies um, when I was working there. And they had a fundraiser for, they, they were matching up to $25,000 to bring um, Starlink laptops, charging stations, um, and other educational devices to Uganda. And that's huge. To be able to take your business and leverage your profits or your experience to be able to bring technology and the ability to learn to countries like Uganda um, or Kenya, these places where education is not easily acceptable, accessible. Um, oftentimes, um, I actually, during my in, in engineering days, I studied in Kenya for a little bit. And one of the ways they got kids there is they, they fed them. That was like, if you come to school, we will feed you. And parents would send their kids because they couldn't feed them. And that was the only way that they would get education. So it's really cool to me to see people like IT Partners Plus leveraging their experience and their needs, or their, their experience and their um, resources to help other places around them. Um, Crew Who recently posted uh, about some of their team taking personal time off to help with the flooding in Brazil. Um, so that was really cool. I thought that it was neat that Crew Who celebrated this. Um, I know some, some, some uh, MSPs that give their teams time off. They expect, you know, like, hey, you've got eight hours a month to go and work at a soup kitchen or these partners. Um, so if you guys do that, like, put that in the Slido and we can, I'd love to talk about what you guys are doing. And then the last thing I want to talk about is um, RISE. That's Restoring Inspiration Through Success in Education. And um, this is actually from my experience with the district attorney's office, uh, even though I was complaining about it. There's some really beautiful things. You don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. There's some really beautiful things that happen in the world. So this initiative, um, I live in a very rural area in, in Georgia. And this initiative is created by my district attorney to take resources that have been diverted from uh, crime. And this is kind of a, a touchy subject if you want to talk about um, uh, you know, we're not going to talk about that. But, uh, so, so she take, actively takes resources and puts it back into our community. So there's kids who have been impacted by traumatic um, experiences. So maybe their parents have been murdered, or their parents are in jail, um, or they're, even if they're failing um, school, they can be referred to this program where they get intensive free therapy, mentoring, tutoring, and these are things that are going to get them out of the regular cycle that they're already in of violence. Because speaking in Georgia, um, the crime is uh, it's a pie chart of murders in our area. And it's half domestic violence and half gang violence. Eesh. So you're going to be killed by someone you know. Yeah. It's, I mean, there's a little sliver that's like uh, car accidents. No, but that's, that's what you see. And I mean, you just being able to bring that uh, to the people, be able to support the people. I mean, it's phenomenal what you're able to do with that. Yeah. And so. She has, she started with 30 graduates, it's a year of experiences for these children. And then um, she started with 30 graduates, and then this past year it was 120 graduates. And these are individual children that are being impacted by the work that is being done in this, you know, they've got, they've, they've got access to therapy, they've got access to um, tutoring and mentorship, they get to see, this, is, this picture is actually them with um, a judge, and that's the DA. And um, I'm taking the picture, uh, not that I'm important, but. Um, uh, and so they get this experience that they may not other, otherwise have the ability to touch. If half of, if half of the deaths, deaths that happened in our community were because someone was murdered in their family, by their family, or by the gang violence, and that's what they're, they're familiar with, to be able to see and experience other relationships, this is stuff that's happening in the world that we need to be able to refeed and stop the cycles. Absolutely. So, did you guys, did anyone? Put anything on here. Is there anything yeah, big, yeah, or is there? Does that give you any ideas? What have you guys seen? No. Big, no. Cool, cool stuff. Cool. Inspirational cool. stuff. Yeah. So what? What are some things that you've seen that give you hope for our community? And you don't have to. At this point, you don't have to put anything up there. Do you guys have anything? Yeah. I me. Mean, what's up? Uh, I did. I did submit something. So I don't know why it's not showing. Sure. 
Oh, uh, maybe it's just uh... so the question wasn't showing until just now. Yeah. Oh. So now we can enter some. Now questions. they can enter on it too. Okay. So uh, I guess. I can make this thing when I have that. Okay. Um, I I work at an MSP that is explicitly a progressive like political organization, so we only support like labor labor organizers and the union, like folks kind of like that. Um, and I just wanted to say that it is like a possible organization to go to the you can have a very reliable clients if you are yeah very explicit about what you're trying to change in the world, because your clients also will want to like want to have politically aligned um, providers too for their operations. But not just that you, because uh, I like like all the other like pro programs that you mentioned. Um, it can also be something where the clients you choose to support are also allowed to be um, so. That's a really good point, and I think a lot. So, did you guys hear what Ming had to say? Um, that that they they essentially choose and their their clients choose the certain things that they want to be involved in, and that's that's where we feel a lot of people are making decisions. And I think a lot of folks are doing that. You know, we. Uh, now um, uh, in the MSP space as we choose our own vendors, right? Like we want to know that someone is aligned with us and so that's a strength. Um, so that's a really cool perspective there, me. Anyone else have something that gives them help you want to share with the class? Yeah, other fun organizations. And it doesn't need to be, I mean, you know, we brought up some pretty hard hitting examples there, but I mean like fun stuff like, Oh man, uh, there was one person in my city that loved the fact that we had for a while a comic convention in San Jose, and then that got moved down to Southern California, and then they decided to have a second comic convention in San Jose, and then that got moved down to Southern California. I swear, this is the building a castle in the swamp of, and it's Silicon Valley, you think that this would be the easiest place to have a comics convention. So they got tired of that, and they started having one. So they went and they talked to the people that they knew that had comic books, in our case, a local library. And they're like, yeah, sure, why not? They now have one of the largest publicly funded comic conventions in the nation. Because one person just wanted to get together with it and do something cool. I mean, we've had people show on up that are just like, yeah, we want to throw a party. I'm like, cool, what's the party about? And they're like, this thing. And I'm like, okay, sure. Why not? And now we've got people throwing paint at each other every year for holy. And let me tell you, if you haven't gone to one of the uh, Indian holy ce uh, celebrations, it is a blast. Great food, great people, and you get paint thrown at you while you wear white. It's fun. Okay, great. This is wonderful. Okay, so decent elected officials. Is that some from someone who has decent elected officials in their area? Yeah, boss? Yeah, um, in Lancaster City, we have one elected official who consistently stands up for like LGBTQ people like me, um, Works for fair housing, lots of cool stuff like that. Awesome! Yeah. It's it's cool. This it's cool to see uh, that they are that not only are they there, but they're getting elected. Like a lot of people, you know, you get to choose. But that's part of what democracy is a young experiment, really. Um, but yeah. we get to continue doing that. Well, that gets back to like the concept of civics. I mean, you want to elect the people that represent you, right? You know, look at the the, the people that you're working with. I mean, that's the question. Who here knows the name of their mayor? Raise your hands. Oh, let's see. All right, we got, we got some of this actually more than I expected. Usually when I ask that to a room, I, get, I barely get 25%, and I work in government. Most of the people I work with should know the name of their mayor. Um, uh, the free NFR for the MSP, who's that? All right, uh, 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 what, what companies have been giving you free NFRs? Uh, Blue Mera. Okay. When they came out with their sock sim, well not really sock, but they came out with their sim solution, they started by giving out free uh, systems to all MSPs, no matter size, whatever. And so, do you need a SIM? Like the the rule is, is that an, as an MSP, you should have a SIM. You should have some sort of security platform. So they're not even going to ask questions. If you're an MSP, you get free access. Nice. That's uh, that's great. So then, Hunters came out with the Watch Guard program. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Copycat. See, that's also something fun. Do something cool, and other people will copy you, and that's not bad. Yeah. Because well, they get more cool stuff. Yeah. We'll talk about it all later. Uh, politically aligned, awesome vendors. Okay, are there some vendor? Who's was that? Are there some vendors that you? Oh, me. Yeah. Are there any vendors in particular that you? Yeah, because well, like for example, like there's some vendors that we order specifically from like major like vendors that like we're really involved. Uh, the telecom that we work with in uh, the SF Bay area. Um, yeah. uh, <laughs> I cannot remember right now, but there's but they also like more virtual. 
That's great. Yeah, you build your ecosystem. You build a community with the people that share your values. Oh, before we move on, I want to hit on one of the things that's on the board. Uh, rural Tech Fund. This is a huge one, and this really matters, especially with uh, you know, the ACP stuff being sunset. But just being able to bring this to more people, trying to bring more people on into it. And that, I kind of think, moves us kind of closer to you know, kind of the next point that we're going to talk about, which is the concept that we want to, you know, starting stuff like this, start small. You know, you don't need to, uh, what's the phrase that we always use in sales? You're not trying to drink the ocean or something? It's a terrible analogy. Who's going to actually go through and do that? But, <laughs> but find something. Find something little that you want to start engaging on. You know, uh, the comic books at the library, the little get together with a band, the you know, understanding who you're working with, who you're selling to, so that you're working with people that are aligned with you. Uh, I mean, heck, it could be as simple as realizing where there may be people in your neighborhood that just might not be doing so well, so you know, bring them over some you know, food or clothing in winter, that kind of thing. It's little things. Good things don't have to be big. So yeah, how are you involved in your community? So we just listed some big things that, I mean, none of us are going to be, well, I'm not going to be creating a product that I'm just giving away to MSPs. Uh, just, I don't have that. I mean, I guess I give my time away, but that's, that's okay. I'm not, I don't have a product, right? Um, uh, what are little ways that we can be involved in community? I'm just going to go ahead and skip over this, so don't worry about it just now, since it's like last time. Yeah, no, I think it's the, the other big one, so. Um, so the question is going to be, what are little ways that you've been able to get involved in community online and offline? So we are all in the MSP Geek community. How do you feel like you've been able to get involved there? Um, and here's just some, some small examples, right? Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's just talking to people. Uh, the guys last night at the keynote made a point of that. Sometimes you just want to rip the bandaid off and be the one that's awkward. A lot of times we don't go out and do these volunteer positions or go and find these places. Because I don't want to be awkward. I don't know what I'm going to be doing. I don't know. So, um, and just participate. Sometimes they just need people. Um, any, any church, any uh, local um, organization. I mentioned the district attorney's office. There are opportunities everywhere that need people just like you so that they can invest in other people who need the skills that you have. Um, so, here's the... What are ways that you get involved in your community while you're entering that yeah. stuff on in? I mean, like, you know, it's... Find fun stuff that you like to do that maybe you already have an online community that you may have built or you participate in, and bring it to the people around you. Don't be scared about talking about this stuff. I had a great conversation with somebody uh, a week ago in Yosemite who's a county commissioner for a county in the middle of nowhere about Magic the Gathering because they love watching it being played online, and they even got themselves a nice little group being built. This is a county of, like, I think 3,000 people. Like, my high school had more people than that. And they started it, and they've got, I mean, it's, it's almost like a bridge club. They've got these old grannies playing that apparently will destroy you with this red-black deck that they're doing right now. <laughs> you know, so it's that, that kind of building community, and stuff that we love to do anyway. Yeah, um, so for example, um, one of the things that I've been involved in in my community in Macon is called the Macon Community Fridge. So I'm sure you've all heard of a food bank, um, and you've heard of like a community kitchen or like a soup kitchen. Um, but there's a thing called, if you've not heard of it, has anyone heard of um, community fridges? Okay, okay, great. So um, a few of you have, but so a food bank, you know, is where essentially a food bank can buy a lot of food or people donate canned goods or whatever. A community fridge is uh, just that. And often it'll be a fridge or a pantry uh, in a safe location where people can go and get a meal. And um, you don't have to drop off you, you know, canned goods of a specific type. You can actually drop off leftovers. So you pack it, they re request that you package up individual um, plates of food and label it what it is in case people have allergies. And you can go and leave it in the fridge for people who need to extend their week a little bit. They don't have money for another meal. They can go in and do that, um, have that as a meal. Often, um, I'm, a, I'm a gardener, so if I have a lot of food, like a lot of produce left over because I can't eat that many bell peppers, um, I, I'll take them to the community fridge, and it's amazing how quickly they're gone. Uh, a lot of times I've had, um, I've been putting the food in the fridge, and um, we call them shoppers. A shopper comes up looking for stuff, and I'll, I'll ask them, I'm like, well, if I go to the groceries, is there anything I can pick up for you? 
and they're not they're not looking for handouts. They're like they'll say stuff like I have one guy say, um, well it's really hot right now, so if you could maybe put some bottled waters in the freezer instead of the fridge, that would be really helpful. Um, I had had one guy say, I think the kids would love some powdered milk. I've not seen that, and I've got a couple people who are struggling. And so there's there's opportunities like that where you don't have to have a license, you don't have to do it. You can just take leftovers that maybe you made too much of a meal and put it in the fridge on a paper plate and some saran wrap. Um, it's taken care of. And they actually, I helped that organization set up their Slack channel so that they could communicate with their volunteers. They didn't Tech. know. Yeah. So they didn't, they didn't know how to communicate with their volunteers. And I was like, well, we could set up a Slack channel. And I taught them how to use it. And it was, it was overwhelming to them. Uh, that's simple for any of us, right? Like, there's a ton of other options, too. There's tons of chat tools and all of that. But they didn't even know where to start. Um, and so the things that you do for your job, you could do for the, some of these small organizations. Yeah, y'all are smart. I mean, you're here, so clearly you're all geniuses. Uh, but you know how to do things that people don't know how to do. And it's not even just the whole nerdy, oh, yes, I do know how to do that. You have all of these skills and abilities and knowledge that other people don't have that you can use. And you see all of these different uh, ways that you can get involved in your community, things like uh, you know, uh, minority groups like LGBTQ or working with, like, say, the impoverished Big Brothers Big Sisters. You've got local uh, organizations helping out for, you know, youth leadership, donating time, that kind of stuff. Don't think that you need to just be there and be manual labor. Realize you have skills that these people don't have. And what you want to go and donate those skills to is worth a heck of a lot more than just being boots on the ground. That's not to say that you shouldn't. You know, if you want to go through and do that, you know, I know I tend to do a lot of little bit of manual labor here and there, but being able to have that and be able to bring that to an organization will just help in so many more ways. Did you just say goods on the ground? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. uh, a dress down fund donations. What is that? Who's is that? Will you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So um, we get our staff to pay out 25 bucks a quarter, and every Friday they get to dress down. And then at the end of the year, we take the fund, the company matches it, and we go and we buy Christmas gifts for um, families who can't afford Christmas. That's delightful. Like that's freaking cool. And that seems like a, like a small way. Like it's, it's a manageable way to be involved in something bigger than yourself without having to go. And then you get to dress down. Yeah. Uh, that's fun. That's yeah, good. everybody likes the, the, the fun day on that. Um, anything else in here interesting that you guys would be curious for the person that submitted it to talk a little bit more about? Volunteer with local orgs, teaching, teaching youth leadership. Who's teaching youth leadership? Oh, Brian, what's that look like? Um, I volunteer with the, like I'm an officer in the Canadian Forces, but my primary like, job is to teach kids uh, leadership. Awesome. Uh, so it's our, I don't know, you guys probably don't have it here in the States, but it's Army Cadets. So I teach them uh, youth leadership, citizenship, uh, survival, and yeah, similarly, that's uh, Army Cadets is very similar to uh, scouting or Boy Scouts is what it was used to be yeah. called. Uh, it's a little bit more regimented, yeah. um, but uh, yeah, no, and that's that's phenomenal. Because you learn all sorts of different skills yeah. and interacting and having to work with people, and that kind of brings us to kind of a big point that you do need to be able to work with people, but when you do, it well, it, it makes you stronger together. You know, um, it's. Oh God, this, this I made um, it. I made this. <laughs> um, we we work. We are social people. We live in a society, um, and it's when we're able to work together. And this isn't just the people that you already have your own found families as your own smaller groups that you work well together with. This is everybody in your community because you do live together. There's. There's a reason why your neighbor lives in that place, and you should know why. You should know why they love that kind of stuff, because maybe that's, that'll teach you a new way to love the place that you live in. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's really tough also when you, when you think about being in community with other people. It's really easy to be like, well, that was my idea, or I need to have this next big, greatest idea. I need to do the next coolest thing that uh, is unique and puts my legacy out in the world. And really, I think one of the things when we're thinking about um, uh, being involved in community together, being stronger together, is that you don't need a unique thing 
to go and do something good in the world. You can take any of these ideas and incorporate them back into uh, your life, your community, the people that you're involved in um, and with. And that's, uh, so being stronger together really ties into diversity. Yep. And diversity is fun because it's not just the, you know, uh, how many people that are, you know, of different skin color do you hire? It's diversity of opinions, diversity of thought. It's diversity of, you know, how do people think otherwise than I do that I can incorporate in certain ways. And I've got a fun story behind this because um, the uh, company I was at before uh, was well known for a certain marketing line. Uh, humans are overrated, which is great for automation, right? Because humans are overrated. It's better to be able to go through and automate that. So we took this. Made t-shirts. Everybody loved it. People were like, oh, but I don't wear t-shirts. There are too many t-shirts. Let's get a hat. Okay, we're going to make a hat. Awesome. So we took that logo. Uh, we took the, the slogan. We put a logo right above it, slapped it on a hat, and um, got a nice hat here that says, dark humans are overrated. <laughs> That's embroidered. Yeah, it's, it's delightful. Um, we, the, the first person who came up there laughed, and the second person tore our heads off, and the reason why we didn't realize is because we looked at it, and we saw our slogan, that was great, we're like, oh, it's a red hat, that stands out, but okay, it's a little, but we didn't realize that the three couldn't be seen. So instead of it being dark cubed, it was just dark. And the diversity of opinion came from one of our vendors, or one of our MSPs that we supported, and was like, I can't believe you actually did that. That's horrible. And we're just, we were, you know, we, we really had to save that relationship. But then we also immediately printed that in black and moved the logo or to the sides, which just says humans are overrated, and gave him three of them. And he still wears it to this day and laughs and talks about that every day. So you do make mistakes. But man, having a different opinion on our team to go look at that and just okay that would have saved us a lot of hurt. Yeah, it would have uh, definitely been a, been a strength. And the other, so the other part of diversity, um, I just mentioned that I was a big gardener, and this is a question for everyone except Brian. Um, uh, Brian's also a gardener, and he's really into this. Does anyone know how apple varieties are created these days? I've got a picture of a Red Delicious here, but... Does anyone know that, that process? Yes? Do they splice in and actually connect the two different branches? And yes. That? So the way that apples these days, so everyone's familiar with the Red Delicious. It's the worst apple in the freaking world, right? Like it is. You <laughs> it's do, red. It ain't delicious. It's red. You're like, oh, man, this is going to be a great thing. You bite into it. It's covered. It's like waxy and somehow pest tastes like, tastes like chemicals. And then uh, you bite into it and it makes a little crunch, but not really. And then it's like super mealy. Uh, and this, yeah. And it's like this is what we we're supposed to enjoy in grade school. And now we have all these varieties like Cosmic Crisp. And uh, do you have a favorite type? Uh, people's Cosmic favorite Chris. Chris. Cosmic Chris is my favorite example. I knew I liked you. Yeah. 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 Right. Same. Any, any other right. apple types you got? Any shout outs here? Come on. Not even a Pink fruity. ladies. Come on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. Ooh. I love This is a classic guy right here, y'all. So. Uh, so, so the way that, that this has worked is um, we, had, we had these trees, and there's some trees where they've taken a cutting from a red delicious. No, sorry, we're not doing that. Uh, they've taken a cutting from an ambrosia tree, and they've taken it and they've put it into, they've spliced it into a uh, red delicious tree. There's actually some um, examples of, of um, apple growers. What's the word for that? Or orchard? Apple orchards? Orchard, yes. Where there's trees that have multiple varieties of apples. What's that, Brian? I have them in my house. Yeah. <laughs> Five trees with the whole whack of different apples on all of them. Just a bunch of them. Well, yeah, yeah. why did we do Red Delicious? It's because it's a hardy tree. They're hard to kill. So what do we do? We use the trunk for the Red Delicious, which is the part that stays alive, and what do we add onto the sides? The stuff that's actually delicious, the stuff that adds character and flavor. Exactly. Yeah, so, so all of that to say, just because where you are today, just because things suck right now, where you are, something feels like not great, it's not 100%, it's not what the world that you wish it could be, you can take ideas from other places, even if they're not original, even if they're not unique, there's still value there. Take the good bits and see how you can splice them into your own communities. So uh, that is, we got something. I was about to say, do you want to hit the next slide? Because I believe it is. No, I, not, not that, now that you mentioned it, I don't want to. Hard. <laughs> No, in fact, just what do you want, uh, big things that you've done or would like to splice into your community? What are fun things that you do that you want to bring on in and make part of what you do? 
Or what could other people do right now in the room? How would they take back with them today? I told you guys about, um, I told you guys about uh, the district attorney's office and she didn't come up with all those ideas on her own. She goes to a conference, she finds something that's interesting to her, she brings it back and tells her team to make it, and they do, and they do a lovely job. They make the RISE initiative, we take that to conferences, and they tell it to other people. Um, we're taking the good bits or the parts that we can manage now, and we're starting it, we're splicing that into what we have, and we're growing past that. Yeah, we're not just here for D&D night and pool time, I know. Uh, but yeah, what, what are some things that you want to build that you've learned, not just from this talk, but like from the rest of this convention? What are things that you're now thinking of that you're like, hey, maybe I can bring that home and make that part of my life, make my life better? Um, one of the things that I had up there was a, a group called Run For Something. Has anyone heard of Run For Something? So Run For Something is a nonprofit here in the state specifically um, that helps younger people run for office, whether whether lower level, like city um, city seats, county seats, um, state senate or congress, and you know maybe down the road if you want to go. I mean, I don't know. Maybe there's someone that's doing president right out of the gate. Um, but so that's see you run for something can't pay for the presidency. That'd be right. crazy. I mean, one of the things that we need. You're talking about uh, an elected official who who knows what the people need and who is there and who is who is initiating these instances. As technical people, we need to be finding uh, and being the elected officials that we need to see, so that we aren't being uh, pigeonholed into bad uh, technical. Um, yeah, you remember the if you're not driving the ship, you're just uh, along for the ride. Yeah, same thing. You can do it. Uh, you can. I don't know. I don't know how many of you know your elected officials. Um, we did. We got like what fifty percent on the who actually knows the name of their mayor at least. Yeah, but like, like no, like uh, experience how they run an office or sure. whatever. Not to say anything about sure. my experiences, but like, we we often look at someone and we're like, oh, they ran for office. That's really cool and really beautiful for them. But like, why not you? Why not you? Uh, <laughs> there's tons of people that are doing stuff. So. Um, is there anything that you guys have experienced uh, that you, you would hope that other people would take into their lives or their accounts? Is that question not coming up or do you guys not have answers? No, that's someone typing. Oh, that's oh, okay. other people are typing on into it. Okay, so now it's coming up. <laughs> like, I'm like, canvassing. Do? Okay, okay. Canvassing with your workplace. That's always fun. Being able to get people together at the office, the people that you have to deal with every day, and finding out that you've got shared goals outside of it is great. Uh, we, uh, one of the funny things is that for a lot of us, once we leave school, whether it's you know grade school or college or that kind of thing, it becomes really hard to make friends outside of work. And that's because, well, when you're at school, you're stuck with all of them. So of course you became friends. Well, now you're stuck with all the people at work. Figure out what they're into. Do the same thing you did in grade school, except now you can go get drunk over it. <laughs> you know, Go and find out what's great that they like to do and participate in that. Or find something that you like to do and bring it to them. Um, I was going to say, one of the, way back when, I worked at Barracuda Networks, and it was a very much work hard, play hard kind of atmosphere. And learning about fly fishing from one of the buddies there, and getting whole, just going crazy into that, is, it's one of my new passions. And I would have never done that. And people would have thought, oh, I would have picked that up from, you know, living in Minnesota, or in Arizona, or something like that. He has an outdoorsy activity, not in Silicon Valley. No, this guy goes in go everywhere to go and find whatever golden trout is out there to get. We got some good ones up here. So we've got rallies, canvassing, going to city hall. But the big one is that bottom one, support networks. And you know the biggest point behind that is that you you will be surprised how much when you start talking to people that they have the same problems as you do. And either you or they may have found a solution that will blow your mind. The City Hall one, who submitted that one? Uh, Ming, how do you know when to go to City Hall? Um, I connected with a local, like, local progressive resident group in my like, city, and he tried to like, inform that like, some of us some of pay like, close attention to these events that are happening, and then inform when we need people to come in. So that way, not all of us really have the time. So, how many of you guys know how often your city hall meets? Do you know where to find that information? 
it's really unfortunate that a huge part of a problem is just a lack of time and the lack of documentation and visibility. Um, it's funny how those those issues cross uh, every single um, organization that we're in. Um, yeah, I mean, look at, go ahead. I was gonna say, I live in Santa Clara. This is the center of Silicon Valley, and our calendaring software for all the local government is trash. <laughs> Believe me, I've been trying working with them on this. It is terrible <laughs> finding that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's, it's, it's tough, and so I would encourage you um, to follow your local government on social media, on Facebook. Uh, they're gonna be probably posting things there. Find their website, uh, they may be posting things there, and then also check your local news. Often, when they're about to do votes on important things, um, you will be able to uh, track them down, what type of things they're voting on. Um, well, these are the votes that matter with you. This is the stuff, I mean, everything from how much does the, the waste fee for having your trash taken care of to, oh, hey, we're going to go through and build a multi-million dollar stadium in your backyard. And to Ming's point, both of those. yeah. And to Ming's point, he was saying that like they have a group that keeps an eye out on certain issues. Um, I was talking with a gentleman earlier uh, who is who's doing a talk on hardening, and he was going through all of the GPO stuff that he sets, and that he wanted to go through each of these things individually and talk to people about it. And he's like, "This is something that I love. I love talking about it." And I think that's one of the things that's beautiful about community is you can be very excited, and this is your thing. And you can share that thing with other people, and they don't need to have as deep of an understanding of it, but as long as they're aware of it, that's important. I think one of the, the, the terrible things that we've done in our communities today is that we are very quick to say, you have to speak up now on this thing that you don't understand. Stand, you know, stand here, do this thing, and if you're not doing this thing, you're wrong, or you're evil, or you're not redeemable. And I think that it's really important to understand that you don't have to have a deep love or longing for everything. Um, that's not possible. There are certain people who do. Find those people, learn what you can about the things that matter to you, and then implement those things um, uh, in a piecewise function. There's no way to know or do everything. Um, so is there anything else up here that is... Yeah, nonprofit boards, conference donations... Wait, wait, what, what is a not-for-profit not board? Do you, does everyone know what, a, what that would look like to be on a not-for-profit not board? I yeah, Melissa? Having been, I worked for a not-for-profit, I can yeah. tell you technologists are so needed in that space because they're just doing so, so many are doing so many things inefficiently mm -hmm. um, that that your your brains would be so valuable, and especially now with the, the cybersecurity issues, like they are absolutely clueless to that. And I understand why, mm -hmm. but I, I would just put a second vote for that. I, I didn't say it, but I would put a huge vote for that. This the, the brains that are at this conference are desperately needed out in the world, as you guys have been saying, yeah. but especially in those in those not for profit spaces, because they think they won't be hit because they don't have money. They don't understand it's about an IP address and vulnerability, so, so we're desperately needed if you have time. <laughs> How did you get uh, involved with that not-for-profit? Not so or? I actually worked for United Way okay. for many moons ago, mm -hmm. um, but I've been connected to the not-for-profit space through my faith community. Okay. And have just been really realizing how much, and I'm not, I'm not the tech person. I mean, I know, I know enough to be dangerous, but luckily I'm connected to some good people locally that I can point them to. But they can't, they can't afford the knowledge they need. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times they fall victim to some really bad practices by some people that don't know what they're doing. <laughs> so uh, they need good brains. Yeah, I worked, I worked with Meals on Wheels for a little bit in Central Georgia, and um, they had a uh, tech guy who um, had set up uh, Google Workplace. And um, uh, I'm putting Google Workplace in, parentheses, or in quotation marks because uh, he had created Meals on Wheels Middle Georgia at gmail.com. <laughs> and that was their one login for all of their computers. And um, I walk in there and I was just. Was that a shared login? <laughs> Uh, did they ever log out? I don't know. Um, I, I went in there to do design work. I was going to do their website, and I looked at their computers, and it's like, even I know that this is not like this is not how it needs to be. And I connected them with an MSP. But anyone else who has done non-for-profit work? Yes, sir. I, not exactly. You know, we're serving on non-for-profit boards, but we actually this is sort of I guess sort of a good example of like tangential, something so um, admirable or uh, specific and intentional um, as a gentleman back here. But we had a client that was non. For, for nonprofit 
for a really long time. In fact, actually one of our technicians that joined our company, um, the client moved with him, they loved him so much. And then over the long period, we had just a great relationship with the CEO of this NFP in particular. And when he moved on to another organization, they found exactly that, it's really common in space. They got there and immediately had massive things to do. He moved there literally to try to turn a lot of that around, but the board didn't understand the need for the spend on the tech side. So he literally, even though who we couldn't afford to work together as a client initially, um, we just continued to consult to him on the side, meet with him and have lunches and help give him ammunition to help arm his board. Not in a, a big sales cycle for us because it's um, challenging, I think, to operate really effectively in NFP, NFP space it's, as an MSP. It's good to specialize in that because there's a ton of stuff um, that you need to know especially. But we did know a good measure of those things even though we weren't aggressively seeking this line of business or this client or growing here specifically. The ongoing just um, side consulting and helping on out with him has totally turned the board around. They found a great MSP, and then they've connected us with a series of other MS, uh, NFPs where we're like, okay, now we seriously can consider this mm. a little more scale when we start working this way. So it's, it's a good thing to just like, again, like good people, good conversations, and then lead in the right direction. Well, what's the name of this convention? MSP Geekon, or word, MSP, so your, your business is dealing with people that don't know IT, so they hire out you. Well, just think about all the nonprofits out there that could use those services, and even, like you say, on just kind of a consulting level. You know, they could use it. So we should probably wrap. Uh, but if you guys want to keep talking about this in the session chat, um, please do. But just as a recap, hope is not lost. You're not alone. You're not stuck. Let's start small. Yeah, start small. Do you something. know, find something small. And we're stronger together. Really, just talk with people, work with people, understand them. And, you know, you'll be surprised what you're able to kind of bring together on that. Thank you. Thanks.